Well, then, if you want to talk about some heat, Will Ospreay and Takeshita with Don Callis on commentary. This is this is a match of the year contender. This Will Ospreay needs to He's be great... top babyface Wednesday. Oh, I yeah. mean, he is so over. They went nuts for this guy. He's they were, they were going to every they, time he's in the ring. They were going nuts for him before the show even started. Yes. He's he's the guy. When they when they put the graphic on the screen, there's only two matches when they put the graphic on the screen where you could hear the giant pop. And it was this one and of course the main of the Sting match. But yeah, as soon as like that graphic came up and I heard the people go crazy, it's just like, well, guess we don't gotta worry about that fallacy about how nobody knows this guy. Because they popped big, and when he came out, like for a guy who has had very little television and none in months, um, other than Wednesday, um, he, they, you know, they see he's a superstar. They know enough people know he's a superstar. Well, and, hell, uh, man, if they didn't know, they know now. Because God but, damn, this match they had. Takesha was incredible. Will Osprey was incredible. Yeah. First ever match between these two. And they, like, they'd worked in they'd worked in a tag match once. Apparently. My God, this was awesome. We had so many incredible spots. The highlight, I think, was when Will Ospreay goes for the Oss Cutter and Takeshita caught him in mid-move and turned it into a blue thunder bomb. Oh, yeah, that's that. This that was, place went nuts for that spot. That was incredible. It was, that was so a great awesome. They went nuts for the Styles Clash spot, like really nuts. Um, when They knew all of Ospreay's moves. It was really... You know the match really was the two guys just doing their 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 usual moves, and I mean, because because again, I've seen so much of Osprey, and I could see the moves coming. But even when you do, they do it with such speed and devastation that it's just not. It's like they're they're just at a different level of, of you know from almost anyone else in the business. So well, the like, thing it, I've noticed with like Osprey, Omega, it's like Omega and Okada were years ago. The thing I noticed with Osprey, and I I really noticed it. Uh... Well, I think in every last single match he's ever had, but the Michael Oku match was when I, I really started thinking about it. He, like, he's changed his style up. Like, he still does Completely. he still does some crazy shit, but he doesn't, like, it's not out of control. It's like, he's, he's, he's a smarter worker. He does a little bit less. But the thing is, everything he does, when you look at it, it's like, it have I ever seen anyone do that better? Like, it really hit me when he hit... Uh, his, 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 his technique is, is, is absolutely incredible. He hit Oku with a back suplex. Lift him up, put him on their back. Everybody does it. This back suplex was like the most incredible back suplex I ever saw. And then he has a Pescado. Everybody does a Pescado. I watched his Pescado. It was like, that's the best Pescado I've ever seen. It's like you watch the match, and it's like, does anybody do that match better than him? At best, you'll find someone who does it as good... But, like, is there any move he does where there's, like, somebody else that does it better? It's just, like, every move he does is like that. It's not the different variety of moves or or how many moves. It's, like, he has a set of moves that he does, but every single one of them, it's, like, you've never seen anybody do it better. It's because of his, it's because of his speed and a little bit of power and conditioning, but it's the speed that's the key. He does it a little bit faster, and he drops them a little bit harder. You know, it's just that that's that's what it is. It's it's very similar to Terry Funk. Now, Terry Funk didn't do a lot of super sensational moves, but Terry Funk would take every bump in a manner that nobody else does. Um, I mean, Ray Stevens did to a degree, but really, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a, got a cough, but Terry Funk, like everything he does was just the same moves that everybody else did, but he just did him, he, the bump would be just a little bit more devastating and he would just flip a little more or do a little thing. And I noticed, like, in the last year when I watched Osprey, you know, before the thing with Osprey was he just did all these crazy moves. And, um, you know, but now it's just what he does. He does everything better than anyone else. And, I mean, it's really come to the point now where it's almost like I think that we almost have to add a mo a, an award next year for best match of the year that doesn't include Will Osprey because... It's just like nobody's got a chance unless they're in the ring with this guy because he's he's just so incredible now. I mean, like this year, of the four best matches I've seen this year, this is one of the four. And the other ones would be Will Ospreay against Michael Oku, Will Ospreay against Josh Alexander, and then the other one's Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr. So it's like 
we're we're only in March, the first week of March, and he's already had three of the four best matches of the year. And this match was very similar to the Josh Alexander match, but I think it's just, I think this was a slightly better version of that same match where it's just um, you know where you have somebody who's almost as equal in the ring, and that's one of the reasons why the match is so good. Whereas the Oku match was just pure storyline, so it's a completely different style of match than you would pro than you'll probably ever see, you know, for Will Ospreay in the United States, just because there's nobody that he's got a three year storyline with, but. Um, Takeshi, I think it was Takeshi's best match in the United States. Um, he just, you know, he's another one. He's so quick and so athletic. <laughs> Excuse me. He he did a German suplex. I mean, he did a lot of German suplexes. He did a wheelbarrow. He did, you know, I mean, he's the master of it anyway. But he did one German suplex that was just as picture perfect a German suplex as you'll ever see. So uh, there was also the spot where uh, he gave him the top rope brain buster, but he actually missed the turnbuckle, and he fell you right know, down on his head and smashed his back on the buckle and was all yeah, messed it, up. Yeah, so that's that's the that's the that's the injury that may keep him out on Wednesday. Is his back had this giant um, rash looking thing, you know, and he had a big bump on his back. I mean, he definitely that move hurt him, and he's you know he sold it, but he came back. And I mean, the rest of the match, you know, he was still the same. And in his post-match interview, he didn't come, he wasn't limping in there. He wasn't bending over or hunched over. And he was happy as hell. I mean, it's like he just sat there and he was just so happy. And he did, He gave a great, um, you know, he, he talked about what a challenge this is going to be because, you know, he's, he, you know, he goes like, you know, once a match starts, I'm pretty confident what I can do. But. You know, he's never done American style personality interviews. Like his interviews are like he does a great interview like a Bret Hart would do, where you're just telling the truth as you see it and you do a good delivery of it because you believe it. He's really good at that. But, you know, um, one of the things in those interviews is he's always swearing. He can't do that on American TV. And he said he's got to learn how to not swear. And he says it's very difficult for him to talk without swearing. In fact, he was trying to do it in his post-match interview, and I think he swore four times. So he may have some trouble there on some of these interviews. But he said he's got to, you know, that's the thing he's got to learn this year is how to do American-style television interviews and get over doing them as opposed to just getting over by going out there and having great matches. Because if you go over there and have great matches, it's it's like, it's... um. You know, it's especially now, even as great as his matches are, that's not gonna that alone is not gonna get you to the superstardom that, that he needs to be. You know, I mean he needs to be you know, he needs to be the guy who's gonna win the world championship at uh Wembley this year. I mean, to me that's like the most obvious storyline for the whole year. It's the thing that they should do. I don't care who the champion is, I don't care if it's Swerve, I don't care if it's Joe, I don't care if it's Adam Page, I don't care if it's Brian Danielson, whatever, whoever ends up with that belt, they need to lose it to Will Ospreay at Wembley Stadium, and that's the other going to be the other big moment of the year, along with this Sting thing tonight. So, uh, end of the match. I mean, Cal's doing commentary the entire time, putting over how athletic both guys are. And then uh, finally, we had a striking battle, Styles Clash, Tiger Driver 91, which Cal's was not happy. One of his buddies dropped the other one in the head. And then uh, hit the hidden blade and got the pin. Just an absolutely fantastic match. Absolutely fantastic debut as an AEW contracted performer. And then Kyle Fletcher came down to the ring afterwards, and uh, they talked about what great friends they were. They'd lived together, trained together, and they're wrestling each other on Wednesday if they can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He talked, put over um, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis as like two of his best friends, and can't wait for Mike, Mark Davis to get back as well. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, 
As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.